huge thank you goes out to Akrama Tool and Nicola Pro supporting this channel at the all electric tier. All right, YouTube, so we are back again with another Kirby Country Road Test, this time running 2020.16.2.1 in my 2018 Model 3 with hardware 3.0 and the FSD update. So we are going to take this Kirby Country Road Test. If you haven't seen the series before, I have a huge playlist that you can click on, and that'll be down in the link below. So here's our first turn we have coming up. You can see, whoa, we are going off the right side of the road just a little bit. No warnings from the car, but went off the right side of the road, although it didn't. I did not have to disengage. Here's 2020.12.5, the last software update, and it performed beautifully. So not a great start to this test, but I will say you're going to want to stick around for the end of this video because this software version 2020.16.2.1 is really impressive on some of these curves. I sped this part of the tape up and now I'm going to slow it down because we have a pretty significant right hand curve here and you can see it handles it beautifully. Not only is a car slowing down, but it's maintaining that center lane position just like we like. Okay, this test has been a struggle the last couple software updates that we've tested on and let's see what happens here. So we start to go, we have another car coming and right there at the midway point of the sharpest point of the turn, I have to disengage. And so it does go a little bit faster on this older software test before I do end up disengaging because it just goes in way too fast. So here is another old test that we did and you can see I disengaged at about the same point. And looking at this test, I think Tesla limits the degree in which the car is allowed to turn when in autopilot. You can see here that it looks like it's going to do a great job, but then I think it's only allowed to turn the steering wheel a certain degree right now when the car is engaged in autopilot. That's why we get the immediate takeover immediately because the car is recognizing that it needs to make a sharper angle turn or turn the wheel in a further angle than it's allowed to. I think that Tesla has some underlying provisions in the software limiting how far the steering wheel can turn. Pretty straight here in the test, but we are coming up to a blind hill here, so let's see what the car does. We did get a takeover immediately in the first test and no issues there. Now we have a right curve here and we are slowing down significantly just like we wanna see, just like a normal human would drive on this type of road. A normal human's gonna slow down just like Autopilot's doing here. Really, really smooth. Big improvement over the last software update. If you haven't seen that, go watch Kirby Country Road Test number 15, the previous video to this one here. So now we have one of the last really aggressive curves on this first section of road, and let's see what happens. So typically I have to take over here, and you can see that it slows down all the way. I think it got down to 16 miles per hour, but I did not have to disengage. It was able to go through. Here's test number 14. And you can see I had the disengage going 27 miles an hour versus this current test here on this curve. No disengagement necessary and Tesla Autopilot slows down all the way to actually 14 we saw right there. So really impressive with the Autopilot system slowing down really significantly identifying that there is a severe curve in the road. Very, very impressive. So here we can see on the center display it actually shows that we have a stop sign coming up but you can see here that there is no stop sign visible until we make this final little curve here and then the car is actually able to see. So that tells us again that we are seeing actual data from maps and the car is using the autopilot system as far as stoplight and traffic light control is using that autopilot data. Now I do engage, although this is sort of a funky T intersection and the car does say take over immediately and it's smart enough to identify that type of intersection. So really cool to see that. We get an, another message about a stop sign on the center display, although we are taking this fork right before the stop sign, so I do have to disengage autopilot here, and then I can re-engage it after I yield and make sure there's no other traffic coming. So here we are in a little small part of the town, which I always try to catch the train, and unfortunately I did not catch the train here to see if the car will stop, but with this new software update, we do see that it is saying, hey, there is a traffic light here and you need to acknowledge before I'm gonna go through that traffic light. So I let the car come to almost a complete stop before I do acknowledge that, okay, there's no train, we can cross. So really cool because I did test this in a previous video when this traffic light and stop light just came out and it would show the light on the center display but it would not stop or require acknowledgement before going through. So now we can go through here 
and we are going to re-engage autopilot and this is a really tricky curve right here because the double yellow line opens up here and we get about the same amount of fail where it goes and crosses the double yellow line. We can see in test number 15 that it did about the same as far as disengagement goes. But here, if we look in test number 14, we can see that we got the exact same disengagement where the car started to make the turn and then started to drift back and then said, hey, wait, take over immediately. I'm not ready to handle this. And the same again in test number 13 as well, as far as the take over immediately. So this right curve here is going to definitely be challenging for the autopilot system and the autopilot team in that the double yellow line in the middle does vanish for a period of time because of that intersection back there. So let's re-engage autopilot now and carry on through this curvy country road test. This is the second half of the curvy country road test. Check out on the opposite side of the road, we have a bike coming and the visualization actually picks it up on the center display. Never seen the visualization pick up a bike on the opposite side of the road. Here we have a pretty significant left turn that curves up and autopilot is doing a beautiful job. And again, this, I think maybe five software updates ago kind of mastered that last turn. And so it is still doing a good job on that curve. So we're gonna speed up a bit to go to our next significant curve as this part of the road isn't really challenging for the autopilot and there was no disengagements from me as the driver. So here is a really aggressive curve that the autopilot system will fail at and it does not fail. So it did a great job there getting through that little T intersection. Here's a previous software test where it also was able to pass and did not require any driver disengagement. So here's test number 14 where it's following a vehicle and I think following the vehicle helped it pass this test. And lastly, here is number 13 going through this same intersection where it did actually fail and required me to take over because it was heading for the side of the road. So really impressive to see how smoothly in test number 16 it was able to take that intersection compared to some of the other previous tests. Not too many big hills, so we are going to speed up this section and you can see here in the test that there is no disengagements required and in previous tests, I think the last five tests, there was no disengagements during this section. Now here we have a really aggressive kind of up and down left hand sharp curve and let's see what happens. The car slows down significantly again, making a successful left curve. Okay, now we have a right curve here and again, the car goes down to 30 or 31 miles per hour, making again a successful turn. And finally, the last curve coming up in this test before we go in the reverse direction. Now this one has caused problems with other software updates. Going into the curve, it's maintaining that center lane position and does a phenomenal job there. Here's test number 15. You can see it got way over there to the right side of the road, but I did not have to disengage. Here's test number 14 when it's following another vehicle and it was able to pass versus test number 13 where it got way too fast and it was gonna go off the side of the road there, so I did have to take over. So really smooth here with 2020.16.2.1 in that it was slowing down significantly and maintaining that center lane position, allowing the car to very accurately navigate that curve. Okay, here we go, we're jumping right into the reverse direction. So this was the last curve that you just saw in the reverse direction. So here we go, we're 32 miles an hour, autopilot's engaged, and it is maintaining that center lane position and doing a great job there. So really nice to see that, super smooth. The last software update I did have to take over, and sorry, I don't have the footage from the last software update in reverse. So we have a left bend coming up here, and so the car is going to slow down significantly. And so all these curves that we've seen here, I'm gonna slow down and we're taking them in the reverse direction to see if autopilot, although it did pass all those other curves, I'm gonna see if they can pass it in the reverse direction. So we have that slight bend to the right and it does do a phenomenal job. So 2020.16.2.1 is doing a great job thus far on this curvy country road test in the reverse direction and in the forward direction, it already passed all of the curves. Of course, except that one in the town that doesn't have properly painted yellow lines. So here we go, we are going still in the reverse direction. I'm gonna fast forward through this section of road because it is going 
rather straight and there's not too many difficult curves that the autopilot will fail on. But we're gonna slow down again for this T intersection here because it has failed before in the reverse direction. And you can see it started to get a little bit close to that double yellow line, but I did not have to disengage and it did maintain proper lane position. Although I would like to, to see the autopilot keep the car more in the center of the lane like it does typically, like you see here. Now this is sped up footage. I'm going 35 miles an hour, but it looks like I'm going a lot faster because I just sped it up because I wanted you still to be able to see all the roads and I just wanted to highlight the harder curves on this road and show you that it did not require any disengagements. So let's slow it down here. We have a significant right-hand curve going down a slope here. Car is doing a great job keeping the car at a slower speed, knowing that there's a curve coming up and 24 miles an hour was our bottom speed going through that right-hand curve and that was phenomenal, executed beautifully. So really impressive. And this 2020.16.2.1, I know I sound like a broken record, but there are some huge autopilot improvements with this update. So let's slow it down here. We have a right bend coming around to our really difficult curve here where we lose the double yellow line and we have to make a really sharp turn to the left here. And I do have to disengage there before the car runs off the road because it's going way, way too fast. So we have a stop sign here. I'm gonna turn on the turn signal, but of course it does not support intersections yet or turning at a stop sign. So I do have to disengage because I get the message take over immediately. So I'm going through this town here and now I push on the accelerator pedal or you can also pull down on the drive stock to acknowledge you saw where I went over that railroad track. Really cool to see autopilot system now identifying railroad lights as traffic lights and requiring you to acknowledge the same. Yes, it does get a bit annoying. You can see I disengage there and then re-engage autopilot. Some of the safety things that autopilot team has put in place, like acknowledging at every single stop light or stop sign, or keeping our cars limited to the speed limit on that road do get annoying, but trust me, they will pay off in the end when FSD software is ready for release. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share this video with a friend, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one.